1 John chapter 2, verses 28 and 29 say, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Welcome back to another episode of Walk Talks. And here on this Friday episode, we're concluding chapter two of John's letter to the church at Ephesus and the surrounding areas. The end of chapter two has been so encouraging and so applicable to our lives as we seek to, as believers, continue to remain, to abide in what is true. On Wednesday, I emphasized to you that there are three realms in which we are to abide, to remain. The first was the word of truth. Yesterday, we noted the second realm to continue in the spirit of truth and to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And today, in the verses that we will study together, the call to us is to continue in the Christ of truth, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28 begins for us a new but very complementary theme to what we've read in the previous verses. Through chapter three, John is going to elaborate on the test of moral obedience, moral behavior with the believer. And he's going to continue to say and continue to prove that a true Christian will produce changed behavior. And so this section begins in this verse, 1 John 2 and verse 28, and runs all the way through 1 John chapter 3 and verse 10. The way that John begins this section on obedience is what we're reading today in this motivation to live the Christian life, to obey the word of God, to obey the spirit with the promise and the truth that Christ is coming back. So while this is a new section, we also find in verse 28, the word that has kind of been the theme through the last three podcasts, abide. Little children in verse 28, abide in him. Now we could be talking about the spirit. He could be talking about the father, but the next phrase really clarifies who the little children, the Christians are to abide in. And that is the one that will appear. That is the one who is coming. And that, of course, we know is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're met here with another imperative to continue in Christ, abide, continue, remain, persist in Christ. He says in verse 28, so that, and I love this because this is really the motivation for our present day abiding, so that When he shall appear, we will have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So the truth of verse 28 is that one day we will all stand before the Lord. We will all stand before him and we will give an account for our life. And according to verse 28, there are only two categories of response to Christ's judgment. Everyone will either shrink away, they will be ashamed, or they will stand with confidence before him. These are two words that should conjure up in our minds a picture of somebody standing in front of a large group of people ready to give a speech or a declaration. I don't know if you've had the privilege of taking a speech class where you come up with a topic to present to the class and it is your responsibility as the students to stand up and encourage or inspire or inform about a certain topic. And when I took speech in college, I'll never forget the first speech that I gave. I was terrified. I had no confidence standing up in front of all of those people to deliver the message. That's the picture of this person that's described at the end of verse 28. They are ashamed before him at his coming. The opposite then of that is confidence so that we may have confidence so that we may be ready and literally have freedom of speech before him. May I ask you today, if you were to breathe your final breath, to have your final heartbeat and to slip into eternity today, would you stand before the Lord with confidence or would you stand before the Lord ashamed? You see how this is a motivating factor because this is a reality. This is the truth. We walk in Christ. We remain in Christ because we will stand before him one day. And the difference in plain terms between the person who has confidence and the person that is ashamed before him, the plain 
explanation of that is this is a believer and this is a non-believer. All believers will stand before him one day with confidence because they know they are there not on their own merit or on their own account, but on the merit and the account of the Lord Jesus Christ and abiding in Christ. You stand before the Lord ashamed with no confidence when you do not know Christ, when you are not abiding in Christ. John 8 and verse 31, Jesus emphasizes this abiding, this continuation when it comes to standing before the Lord. Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And that connects back to what we talked about on Wednesday, continuing in the word of Christ in obedience to him and walking with him. That's the person who's the disciple of Christ. John 15 and verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Hebrews 3 and verse 6, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast to the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope that is Jesus firm unto the end. This is the motivation for our abiding in Christ. And that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, being saved, being redeemed, and continuing to know Christ, to love Christ, to grow in Christ. The second truth that John emphasizes in verse 29 then is how you live today reveals who you are following. If you know that he is righteous, and by the way, he is righteous. We noted that he is faithful and he is just, First John 1, 9 said, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. The person who is genuinely saved will be righteous like Christ. He will evidence by his actions that he is truly born of God because he is practicing, he is doing the righteousness of God. And the end of verse 29 is very clear. This is the person that is born of him. May I pause here at the end of this week and just remind you that what we are talking about in this abiding, remaining, continuing in the word of God and in the spirit of God and in the Christ of truth is not perfection. I fail. You fail. We're all sinners. There's still the battle that's taking place between the spirit of God and our life and the flesh. We are weak individuals. And so what I'm not saying is that if you struggle at all, you are not born of God. You are not a Christian. No, no. What I am saying is that if you're in a continual, habitual, unrepentant pattern of sin, disobedience, unrighteousness, and that is the person that will stand before the Lord one day and be ashamed. Now, as Christians, this is a growth process, isn't it? This continuation is something that ought to take place every single day of our life. We ought to grow and mature and continue faithfully in the Christ of truth, in the spirit of truth, and in the word of truth. And by God's grace, continue until the day he returns to take us home to be with him forever. <laughs>